Hello, and welcome to this stream. Uh, so today I am going to be starting the planning and the uh, little bit of the initial development and setup of AHD, which is the, let me just quickly add it in here, the ad hoc dispatcher, which is a system for creating ad hoc commands. And so what does that actually mean? So here would be a good, so a good example of this would be, let's say you have a uh, command that you constantly run, uh, I don't know, let's just say for example, you constantly are, I don't know, CDing into a whole bunch of directories and uh, writing and then get pulling. So let's say you have like, I don't know, like you have uh, like a directory like AHD and then get pull for example, and then CD, whatever. Let's say for just a, just as an example, let's let's just do this: a so CD, AHD, and then git pull. Let's say you had a list of a whole bunch of different directories you wanted to go through, and you wanted to run run git pull in. Um, basically, what this would allow you to do is, let's just say you wanted to type something super simple. So let's say you just wanted to type, you know, update repos or something like that, right? And what that would do for you is it would go through and update all these repos. <clears throat> Basically, AHD would allow you to just write something like AHD uh, dash R for register, uh, update repos, and then dash C or dash dash command. Um, and then let's say uh, git pull, and then dash dash directories is equal to, and then you can just give it like a list of directories that are comma separated. And uh, from there, it would then be able to, every time that you typed in AHD update repos, not the dash R, uh, it would just go through, run the command in the specified directories and just do that for you. So it's basically just a way to quickly dispatch a whole set of commands that are namespaced to a single short command, which is AHD, uh, which is super helpful for if you have a ton of stuff that you do all the time. Like for me, I maintain like 15 or 16 different GitHub repos simultaneously. So just being able to go through and just hit update repos at the start of whenever I log into a system, a, like HD update repos go through, git pull all of my repos. Uh, maybe I have another one that's like AHD like setup workspace and like that. And that sets up like my workspace for a specific class and that sort of stuff. Uh, and then go from there. <clears throat> There's a couple of other more ambitious uh, things that I wanted to get to, but first let's get into the actual project. Let's do some actual project planning. <clears throat> so off the bat, uh, I should probably actually, hold on, just give me two seconds here. Let me just quickly double check and make sure that we are actually live, which it looks like we are live. Uh, oh, I actually put the wrong stream information. So let me quickly change that. A Python. Let me just quickly change this because this is the wrong description. All right, there you go, updated it. Um, so yeah, so that's what it kind of would want you, I'd want it to do. Uh, as you can see here, we're not starting from scratch. Uh, I actually uh, just finished recording a video uh, explaining what this is, but basically I wrote a little Python package template, which is just a bunch of default uh, stuff set up for you in a super simple manner. If you've been following my PyStall development series, uh, you'll see that a lot of this stuff has been following from there. Uh, all the different methods I've learned, I've kind of built a really quick, um, quick and dirty kind of uh, default Python package that can be used to just write something that's going to go up on PyPI really easily. And so I've just cloned, uh, uh, sorry. Um, you can actually just, if you're on GitHub, you can just hit use this template and then you can use it for your own development and that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, so that's all I've done. I've just copied literally that and I'm going to go through and fill it all out uh, from here. Um, the only additional thing that I am going to do uh, on <clears throat> on the GitHub side is I actually really enjoy GitHub's Kanban boards. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a project, which is going to be called HD Project Planning Board. And we're gonna do an automated Kanban. And we'll go ahead and archive the initial cards. 
perfect. So, uh, the way that I like to set this up, um, I usually set it up by version number, so the in progress is uh, I don't, is kind of useful, but I find it more useful to actually just do something like v0.01, for example, uh, and then I would preset this to an in progress column. Uh, anything that's newly added or uh, reopened, or reopened, just set all of these, create the column. Drop that in there. We'll go ahead and delete the in pro domain in progress column and we'll get v0.0.2 ready to go with an in progress as well. Go ahead and create the column and that won't go there. <clears throat> so I just like to plan at least one release ahead of time if I can. Uh, and so since I'm going to be working on v0.0.1 and then if I have more things I know I want to work on right away, then I can kind of prioritize them based on which version release I want to do. So that's how I set up my boards. Super easy. Uh, now I can do project tracking. So first thing <clears throat> that we need to worry about is uh, just writing the, uh, writing the initial CLI. <clears throat> so writing the... Actually, let's do this as, an, as a full-on issue because we're going to need more information on this one. So, initial CLI. And so we're going to want to have the ability to register. Well, actually, hold on. Let's let's split this up into multiple smaller tasks, then we'll go from there. Um, <clears throat> Ability to register a uh, new command. Ability to specify the command to run. And ability to specify the locations to run the command. Okay, so register a new command, specify the command to run, do that. So that'll be in v0.0.1. And then some other more ambitious things that I want to be able to do is have a bash autocomplete for commands. Be able to specify alternative locations to the defaults. Um, and be able to specify alternative commands to default. Uh, false. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's probably the best option. So the for so we're gonna need a couple of utilities for this. We're gonna need. I'm probably gonna do this with docopt, and then I believe there's also a Python package for bash autocomplete. So Python bash autocomplete. But I think it only works with arg parse. Damn. I really hope that's not the case. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. Uh, let's... So... Uh, you know what? We'll deal with that when we come to it. That's going to be a really... That's going to be a pain. So we'll come to that later. Although it looks like apparently... Hmm. So that's interesting. So apparently... So generally, it will support complete commands, options, and option values where the type is click.choice. Subcommands are always listed, whereas options only listed if a dash has been provided. Uh, example, repo. So repo clone dash. CTX, the current click context. So I haven't used click that much, um, but I think click may actually be a good option. Um, uh, Autocomplete docopt. I don't know if docopt actually allows for autocomplete. 
Uh, and very few people do that for such a complex interface. Check out the uh, doc ops completion generates a shell auto completion tool. The command is sudo doc. Hmm, okay. So maybe it is possible with doc opt. I'm. Hmm. I think this means it's okay, but I still cannot use to have completion. Uh, sample file. Hmm. Okay. So I guess so that'll be the, that'll be a more complicated thing. So we'll deal with that later on. Um, I am gonna write the initial thing in doc up just because it's gonna be faster for me to iterate through with how I want the interface to look with doc ops. Um, so even if I end up switching to something further down the road, at least I'll have something guiding to go with. Um, so let's go ahead and let's get started. So uh, right after getting into this, let's go ahead and start setting up some of the information. So in here, uh, I've included um, pretty much everything you need to get started. So in this case, we're going to do... HD. We're gonna do 0, 0.0. Oh, actually, um, so one thing I did name squat this one as far as I remember. Yes, I did. So 0, 0, 0.0.1. So I'm gonna have to do 0, 0, 0.0.2 for the initial release. So let's just go ahead and we'll edit this one to 0, 0, 0.0.3. Uh, or, sorry, um, this is going to be 0. Dot, sorry, what am I doing? 0 0.1.0, dot big column, and this is going to be 0 0.2.0. Dot dot sorry, uh, I make my actual point releases, like the final dot releases, I make that my um, any bug fixes, any bug fixes that need to happen, that's what I use for that. Uh, so. Sorry, just checking to make sure we are all good still, and we are. Perfect. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that instead. So 0 0.1. Oh, go ahead and get rid of this comment. Okay. Uh, so here in words. Add my email. Kieran at canadiancoding.ca. Uh, description. Create ad hoc commands to be dispatched in their own namespace. I'm dis. Hold on. Dis. I right, hold on. Di oh, dispatch. D dispatched. Hold up. I can't spell dispatch. Yeah, okay. Add in their own namespace. So put the GitHub link. And uh, there, 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 there. There we go. Find packages. Uh, so there will be some entry points here. Oops. There is going to be entry points. Uh, we're going to have. A H D and that is going to be equal to H D dot C L I main. Uh, so doc opt is going to be used for argument parsing and everything else is gonna be for development. Yep, yeah, perfect. So everything else has been set up for us. So first thing to do, let's just rename this to HD. And we're going to have, instead of example.py, we are going to rename this to CLI. Beautiful. Okay. 
so our Nox file should already be set up. Yep, it is. And okay, tests and index. Okay, cool. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is let's jump into the README and let's sort out the rest of our documentation before we get started. Okay, so we replace all instances of package name in this file. So package name and there we go. Uh, fill out the sections of this. Oh, excuse me. File with your own information. So in this case, uh, so you can clone the repo here. Clone this repo, uh, or two, three, four. HD or pip3 install yeah. HD. Okay, cool. So that probably should go above the source because that's the preferred method of installation. Okay, uh, so quick start. So we got the installation there usage and arguments. So when we write our doc op section, uh, when we write our doc opt, uh, I'll actually put the usage information in there. Uh, additional information. Uh, da, 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 da. Additional documentation will be available at ahd dot read the docs dot i o I'm sorry https slash slash ahd dot read the docs dot i o I don't think I actually have to do anything else with that but uh, no actually you know what? I don't trust I think typora is giving me a bit of false security there I think that will work now okay cool um turn into how to develop the project. So there are a few dependencies you'll need to use uh, to begin development. In development, you can install them by using pip install ahd uh, dev. Or just install them manually. Okay, folder structure contains all the first party modules used in HD doc test. Do 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 do. Uh, yeah, so I have to set up the MK docs file before I can use that. And da, 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 I think uh, that is all we need. Perfect. So now I just need to go through and I need to do, so do that. I need to update the mkd or mkdocs.yaml. Just in there. So in this case, ahd. Add, sorry, add hawk dispatcher name, read the docs, repo URL is there. And what? Yes, um, <laughs> and what did I say? The there it is. There it is. A H. A H D. 
D auto or at hawk dispatcher. Cool. So we got basic stuff done. We don't have any tests that we need to do. We'll deal with those later. Okay, perfect. So got all of the basic boilerplate garbage up and running. Um, let's go ahead and we will do um, so v0.1.0 and what are we planning on doing for this? So Please focus on So initially is focused on creating the basic functionality. Okay, and this is uh, to be determined for the date. Okay, perfect. Initial release focus on creating the basic functionality for the uh, DHD command. So we want to have features, and we're going to want an ability to register a command. Uh, it's a special to register a. I'm gonna need to pick some different terminology here. Uh, command. We're gonna want to do. Uh, that should be actually. You know what? That should be fine. Ability specify command to run. And ability to specify the locations to run the. Uh, let's also just make a note in here. This package seeks to make the <clears throat> tedious task of random creating one off bash grids uh, obsolete. The the idea is to write and I only command once, once, give it a label and be able to recall it without an issue. Uh, okay, cool. So there we go. So now we got the first thing there. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll just commit all this boilerplate garbage. So git get dot get dash m updated boilerplate files. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Cool. So we got all the boring stuff out of the way now. Uh, let's go ahead and let's move on to starting the actual fun stuff. Cool. So we're going to want to do import, or sorry, from docot import docot. And we're going to want to start writing the specification, so we'll just do what I normally do, which is usage is equal to the string, and we'll grab some boilerplate there and then modify it a little bit, uh, and then we're going to want to do def main, uh, so... Actually, I need to think about how I'm going to store these. Um, let's use config parser. Uh, from 
Huh. Nope. Let's just actually import a contact parser. Config parser. Cool. So, uh, be able to specify a configuration file with the commands in it. I don't like having these sorts of things because it's basically the same principle as dot files. Um, but you know what? I don't know of any other easy way of doing this uh, without having to modify a bunch of garbage inside of paths. So we will just add this to the changelog as well. And let's get to it, finally. Um, <laughs> so what do we want it to do? Uh, we want it to do dark ops. Uh, of usage version v0.1.0 uh, at lab hd ad hoc that's your version 0 0.1.0 okay cool and then we'll just do Its arguments is equal to that. So if I am remembering correctly, we should be able to just do this. And let's go ahead and grab some boilerplate, I believe. Actually, um, no, that's not what I needed. Sorry. That. So I believe, I think I already set up some of the boilerplate inside of PyStyle actually. I think the CLI already had some. Yes, it did. Oh, actually, it had everything in there, so I could just use that. Um, but what we want is to do this. We want to get rid of PyStyle. We want to have AHD. We want to have dash R. Uh, so dash register, we want to have, what did I say, dash C for command, uh, and then, what is it, dash D, no, dash P for path, isn't that right? And then dash D, and dash D, for docs, that seems reasonable, log, Yeah, that should be good. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and... Do I want logging? I probably do. Let's just leave it on. Dash R. Dash dash register. Um, let me specify you are registering. Okay, specify your registering a command instead of running one. Cool. Uh, open up the AHD docs. Uh, help version file. Don't think. So we'll deal with that later. Uh, but that will be an interesting feature. Uh, ability to export config. Ability to specify alternate location on config. Okay. <clears throat> So dash D, or sorry, dash R, and then dash C, dash C, dash dash command. The command to execute.
So let's do this because this is going to be way too confusing. So we need AHD dash R and then let's do this instead. So let's do command then dash uh, oh how do I want this to work? I'm so confused. Oh, I've already screwed myself up. Okay, so dash R is for register. And then we need to specify a command. Or do we even need to specify a command? I guess this could technically also be used to specify just a set of paths. And then you're given the command from there. Yeah, okay. Oh, that actually sounds pretty reasonable. Uh, okay, so let's... Um, I'll take a look at this later. Uh, talk... Oh, so let's just quickly take a look at the doc hub documentation. Uh, bah, 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 bah. So these are required. Uh, 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 uh. So these are arguments are specified dash dash options or commands. So I, let's make this command. Let's just make it a command. People have to type out register and that's all there is to it. Live with it. Um, so we'll just say register. Um, yeah, so we'll just say this. We'll just say hd command register, and then we want to have name and dash dash command. I'm sorry, dash c, sorry. And dash p. Uh, that's for optional elements. Yeah, okay, so dash c is going to be command and path. Cool. So dash c is uh, the command to execute. Dash P paths the paths execute the command in um and then da, 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 da. HD name dash c dash b and then uh, how do they like you to specify so option oh, okay so you don't specify the name interesting Okay, so let's just see that. So, command to execute path. And what was that one liner that we've been using? Create ad hoc commands to be dispatched inside their own namespace. Okay, so let's see what we have now. So, we want to do Python ahd slash. Uh, you guys can see that, right? Yeah. Python hd slash what do you want? CLI. Oops. Register. Aha.
Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So that, just, so that didn't work. Um, let me... Oh, you know why? It's the spacing. Okay. Uh, sorry. So... I think you specified at the top, right? Yeah, so the name up here. And then create ad hoc demands to be dispatched in their own namespace. So I think that's what I wanted to do. Perfect. So, name, false, 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 none. So what if I do ahd eat? Oh, whoops, sorry. Do this, eat, so it should register. Uh, Oh, you know what? I don't need that. Yeet. Okay. So then the name is just yeet. Okay, perfect. So then HD register yeet. Then that would make register true and yeet the name. Perfect. All right. Brilliant. Good stuff. So. Let's take a look. So we'll clear that up, and then we just do H. Oh, sorry, do this. Dash H. HD. Add dispatcher. Great ad hoc commands to be dispatched in within their own namespace. Let's just do that within their own namespace. Perfect. Okay. So now we have stuff in there. So, let's say, let's just do this for the time, er, um, do I want to do the config parser part right now? Um, the config parser part's probably best to do the next. Uh, let's just actually, hmm, okay, hold up, let me just open up, okay, coding. Because uh, I actually don't fully remember the config parser layout. Ah, okay, so from config parser, import config parser. So, we want to do config is equal to config parser. And then do I have to specify the file? Uh, so, in here. Yeah, maybe let's do the. Okay, so. So inside get ignore is I and I already a thing in here? Um oh god, am I really doing a dot file? Oh god, I hate this. Um okay. Uh yeah, we'll just call it dot ahd config. Oh my god. Okay, so by default we'll have .ahd config files. Ugh, that's disgusting. Um, so, defaults, do you have to actually specify anything in there? No. No, you do not. Uh, okay, so, global configuration parser. Uh, 
so this doesn't really matter. <laughs> so you have to do config and then whatever. So we'll do whatever config of name. Sorry, I'm, uh, let me just quickly do this. So config of arguments. Uh, what is it? Name. Okay. So this will be if arguments of, uh, what the hell did I call it? Did you just register? Then config arguments name is equal to, and we want to construct dictionary and we're going to want to do uh, 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 command, Respectively, going to be equal to arguments of what's. I just call it dash dash command, command, and dash dash paths. Try this again. So register eat as git pull. Uh, sorry, dash c dash p. Assign to a function call. Eh? Oh, because this is not a string. Uh, so we want to do that, and we want to do string. So both of these probably gonna have to do the same thing. No, because these will, these will be strings. Uh, it's be. Uh, is it because I didn't specify? Hold on. Cannot assign. Oh wait, sorry, I'm an idiot. What am I doing? This is what. That is why. That is happening. Aha. See? That did not work at all. register yeah let's just try that 
new. That. Do I have to specify the full thing? Oh, I am using this completely wrong. Hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. No. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, options. Aha. Uh -huh. So, name. All right, and then move. Oh, do you have to do that? Is this how this works? That's kind of gross, but maybe that is how it works. Dash dash command must not have an argument. What? Dash dash command is an argument. What? I'm so confused. What? Register name. I'm so confused. Why? You know what? Maybe I just don't need the dashes. Let's just get rid of the dashes. But if this is the case, then there has to be a command. Oh, wait, no. Maybe you can fill it with an empty string. No, maybe that's fine. Um, okay, so, uh, brackets, optional elements, required elements, mutually exclusive, one or more elements, options. Double dash is a convention to use. Positional arguments that can be mistaken for option. Okay, so let's try that. And then we'll do command and paths. Oh, oops. Get pull is the command, and the paths are there. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So that works. Uh, are you able to specify an empty string? Yeah, okay. So that makes the command empty. Okay, cool. So that works. Um, maybe let's do this. Four item in. Uh, 
Okay, that's gross. Let's see what happens. Okay, so command is nothing and paths are whole. Okay, cool. Perfect. So, although that's gross, that does work. That's one thing. So, let's just say with, uh, what's the convention? Let's just do this real quick. Uh, da, 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 what was the file type I made up? .ahd config. That works. Um, mm, 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 mm. I'll need to figure out how I want to do this. That should work for now. So let's let's just quickly see. So that will allow me to register it. So for now, uh, how do you? Sorry, how do you load the files again? What was the? Yeah, okay. Let's just copy this as well. So if path dot exists, this thing. Then do that. Config dot read for value in what? Oh, is that it? You see that? So if register, do that, else, uh, what do I need to do? Oh, I need some processing for this as well. config arguments name command uh, whoops let's do this with the whoops. single quotes actually okay so we have the command there. And what we're saying here is that we want it to run whatever command we specified in the argument name command. And then immediately after that, we want it to specify paths. And we want to do it like this, because these need this. Bop. Okay, so register yeet, and we want that to get pull. Just like that, ahd register. Path is not defined. So if not, Fairly 
this is OS. That actually work? So now if I just type in yeet. So yeet is there. The key error, okay, where is this? Raise the key error. Forty-eight is where we need to look. Subprocess dot open. Uh, else, okay. Let's just try this first. Did I say name? Sorry, no, it's name. Wait, no, hold on. That's right. Key error command. Oh, I see, because it's loading. No. Hold on. Key error. Oh, yeet. So it needs to run. Hold on. Hold on. Because how does it set itself up? Hold on. No, it's just command. That's why. Right the first time. Command and paths. That's right. Wait, did that actually work? Wait. What? Okay, so we need command. We need that gone. And for paths, we need that gone. Yeah, let me bring this across a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So that worked. Okay, so subprocess.popen, and we're gonna wanna make shell equal to true here. Just so it executes in the same spot. Cool. Okay, so somehow that actually worked. So, I guess the biggest thing now is being able to specify, well, the command doesn't really matter. So the command is the command I guess we've already done. Uh, like, the, uh, sorry, I should be more careful of what I was saying. Uh, so command is done, so we don't need to worry about being able to have multiple commands because that'll be handled by whatever the subsystem is. But uh, the ability to specify a command, oh, actually, one thing I just realized is you Dispatch. That's one thing that should be interesting down the road. Um, okay, but the biggest thing with this is we can now register a new command, we can specify the command to run, uh, specify the locations to run it in. So we want to be able to specify the locations to run it in. That's going to be a problem. 
Um. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's also just do this. Configure. I think I can just do that. I'm pretty sure. Just import OS, and then let's just break where the path is. Where is where is that? I can't remember what that is. Uh, exists. Config file path. Read. Config file path. Okay. Okay, cool. So, now that we have that, we need to figure out how we want to do this. So, we want to do. So we want to do the Dunder file, but we want to specify uh, how to get the directory file in Python. I just don't remember what it's called. Is it os.curd? Uh, it's just os.path, their name. I don't know why. That should be fine. Uh, so we need os.path.dirname of dunder file. Cool. Let's see what we got. Aha. Uh -huh. Key error yeet. Sorry, we have to set config. Uh, 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 uh. If arguments register, just register it. So that will go ahead and read it if it exists. Do that otherwise. It'll then add stuff and then rewrite it and otherwise it will just go in and do that. So that should work. Uh, sorry. Now, 
We should have bam dot ahd config perfect. So that works. And yes, I do hate myself for having a config file. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that should be fine. So that at least works. Uh, now the next thing that we need to do is. If there are paths, then we need to split the paths based on... So we need to do some pre-processing. Um, so what we'll do here is we will define under pre-process uh, paths. Paths and then... Okay, so we want to do result is equal to paths dot strip and then dot split on a comma and then return the result. Process the paths, and there's not really going to be any pre processing of the commands. So, um, mm, 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 mm. else, paths. Uh, so that will pre process our paths and put them back. Where is it currently getting its config? Weird. Okay, that's fine. Um, so that should pre process any of the paths that we have into a list. And in here. So if oops of this for subprocess.p open uh, 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 current path and else do this <laughs> else do that so I think register yeet is git pull cool uh, now if I say register yeet as git pull and then let's do I don't know what are a bunch of paths uh, sure we'll do SSB Website. And we'll just do one more just to make sure that we're uh, sure to never. There we go. Cool. So 
Now, let's see what happens. Invalid ref space. Hmm. You know what? How? Hey. Let's just do this real quick. colon slash slash users development website oh god because this is going to be It's gonna have to the, so the so it's gonna have to split them, and then it's gonna have to dot replace. Oh boy, this is gonna be disgusting. Uh, dot replace. Um, I'm gonna have to rostering this. Uh, double slash with single backslash. This is also gonna have to be a rostering. Oh my god. Um, uh, that replace double slash with os.sep. Let's just do that instead. Oh, oops, sorry. OS, oh, oops. OS.sep. see ah oh, it's still gonna replace it with that isn't it pre-process the path damn it uh, that's just okay we're just gonna replace it with a normal slash whatever you know what don't care let's replace it with a normal slash Formatting from string. I thought there was an R. Uh, God, okay. How do I? So, 
as far as I knew, if you put an R in front, the string literal would force it to be a raw string. Maybe that isn't the case. Uh, string literals, Python. I thought that was the case, though. I thought that if you... Okay, yeah. Okay, no. Looks like analysis. Uh... Yeah. So this is what I don't understand. So F strings, yeah, so that's the F expression. Okay. Numeric, integer literals, floating point literals. So I don't understand. Short string, any short character accepts. Does it explicitly n not ignore backslashes? That is really dumb if that's the case. Um, I don't think. Uh, okay, wait, hold on. Like, I don't... I don't understand. You need to escape the backslash. Do I have to seriously escape both sets of backslashes? Do I have to really do this twice? God damn it, is this... Ah, mm. Mm. No, it's not even finding it. This is ridiculous. Hold on. What the hell? Yeah, so it's being changed. I don't get it. Why is this happening? Is, oh, is Python doing some sort of BS? Oh my god. There's no other... Mm, there's no other character that I can pick, though. So, if it has double slashes, though... Also, this... That strip didn't work at all. Why didn't that strip work? Oh, I got to split in that strip. Ah, oh, shit, no, I'll just strip it over here. There we go. Uh, oh, no, it didn't work again. That's weird. Um, okay. Ugh, I have no idea how else to do this, though. So where am I calling the pre-process paths? Yeah. Okay. Right, and then let's just do this path. We go to path dot strip. Okay, but okay, now it's just not even doing anything. Okay, screw, screw this stripping. Whatever, I don't care. Um, okay, now I can't get it to do anything. Why is this not working? Working. For path in result, replace the yeah, replace the. 
backslashes. Replace both of them. Why is it forcing it back? I don't understand. Like, I genuinely, I don't understand. So let's just replace every instance. Yeah, okay. But why? Like, I don't understand why adding them to a list is changing this. What's happening? Maybe I'm just being an idiot. Am I just not doing the index? Uh, 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 result index is equal to path that replace. Oh, okay. Yes, I am just being an idiot. But why is two what? Two is working now? What? Okay, whatever. I don't care. I don't care. You know what? It works. I don't care. Um, okay, so that's fine. Um, okay. What was I doing? Oh, you know why? Because this needs literal so for the paths they need literal quotes just like that which is disgusting And let's see what we got. Canadian, what? Canadian coding. Wait, what? What the hell? Okay, hold on. So, what is happening here? Wait, what? Why is this a string? What is happening? There's some, okay, there's some garbage happening here. What the hell? So, if the type is equal to list, so when it's being pulled back, it should be being returned back as a list. Okay, so hold on. So let's just double check. So where's, where's that logic? So if it exists, read the config. Okay. Uh, okay. 
Okay. If a config file doesn't exist, create one. Okay. Um, so if there's no paths argument, arguments of paths is equal to D. Okay, yeah. So if you're registering, register the commands. Yeah. Config. Take the name. And take the current path. Okay, hold on. Uh, let's just print these out real quick. Boy, I am real confused here. What the hell is going on? What? What? <laughs> what? Hold on. That's a list. <laughs> what? Uh, oh my god, this is config parser. Because... Okay. Starts with that. Forgot type conversions are all explicit. Option values must be strings. Config parser really force you to have everything as a string. Wow, that's oh, I forgot about this. Okay, um, so if it does start with that, then we're going to need to do this where we're going to, to make paths equal to that. And then we're going to have to do current path in paths. Do that, okay. Okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. God damn it. What? Print ads. What the hell? <laughs> what is happening? Why? Oh my god, this is so annoying. Okay. Conflict parser might not be the answer for this one. What the hell? Um, do I have to. Oh no, I have to re split, don't I? Oh my god. Paths equal to this. Dot split. Uh, eh, 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 eh. And this. Okay, so config arguments names paths. Oh my god, this is awful. Why? From one. Start, stop, step. So stop. Negative one. And continue forward as normal.
Wait, what am I doing? I can just do this. I can just do this. Dunder. Preprocess paths. Of this. God, this is disgusting. Okay. And then dot replace slash with OS dot set. Process paths. Oh, why is it a double list? Why? But why? No, oh, because I need to do it here. One. Wow, this is disgusting code. Oh my god. Why? What the hell? Wait, I'm so confused. So, it's already... Oh, oh god, there's so much data transformation going on here. Oh. Why is this so complicated? So, okay. Okay, so I have too many things printing. Hold on. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Okay. So we're just going to print the results. So why? Why are you two separate? Hmm. hmm. So that should strip, nope. That didn't do anything. Oh, what the hell? Okay, okay. What is happening? Okay, 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 okay. You know what we need to do with this? Let's do Python preview. Let's get serious here. Let's do Python preview. Okay, this is very, very confusing. Name, Dunder file is not supported. Oh, no. 
no, 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 don't do this, okay. Ah, oh, there's no good. Okay, let's not do that. So, what is happening? I'm making too many mutations here. This is the problem. I'm making way too many mutations, and it's making this way too complicated. So, let's look at how we can strip this down and flatten it out a little bit. So, we have... Uh, if the argument... If there's no path argument provided, which I think the standard command... So, when you just specify a name, it just assumes that there's a name, and the specify, it assumes there's no paths or anything okay so if that's the case we're not specifying anything it sets paths to nothing uh, otherwise the paths go through a pre-processing step which is actually not required until here. So if the arguments are registered, yep, yeah, okay. Then, no, sorry, that's right, that was right the first time. So if any path is specified, then we want to pre process it, which it will then go through. So let's say it was that one that I specified before. Wait, hold on. Ah! We have our culprit. Right there. Okay. That was what was going on. There's still too many data translations, but... Ooh, okay, what is happening... So the results equal to an empty, okay. So let's just set results equal to an empty list here. Now it's completely empty. <laughs> wow. Okay. Dear God, okay, what is happening? So, ah. Uh, wow. Wow, okay, I got myself into a bit of a mess here. So, I need to dig myself out because this is terrible. So, what do we have? So we have result is initially equal to the, uh, the thing, empty list. Um, if I'm specifying it to be a list, then I need to replace that with nothing. I need to replace that with nothing, and that's fine. And then for each... Oh, God. Okay, uh, and then it's equal to... Paths to, oh boy. No, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. So we're doing paths.split. For each of these, we're doing... Okay, hold on. 
what is happening now? Okay, why is that? God. <laughs> what? Why does this make it so difficult? Config.read. Okay. And I can't, I can't, mm, I can't reset. I can't reset that value to a list. Oh my god, why? Why? So it starts, so if it starts with that, okay. Then, okay, let's not even pre-process this. What we need to do is we need to set the paths. Okay, okay. So we have a string representation of a list at this point. This is, that's what we're currently at. So we're, we wanna take the paths, set them equal to that, okay. And then we do paths dot paths dot replace. Where's that section? So paths dot replace. That with OS dot set. Okay. Paths is equal to that. Alright. And then paths is equal to dot separate on the comma. And we want that to go from one negative one please dear god work what is happening 76 uh no you can die yeah you can die so can you oh, oops so can you let's flatten that out okay okay let's get rid of that Damn it. Damn it. Ugh. What? Doesn't it? Wait, what? Yeah, it passes us. Oh, split. Whoops. What did I say? Uh. Split. There we go. Okay. I don't know why that's broken now. I genuinely have no idea. Let's just, let's just print F pads. Pads. Let's see. So I don't understand why. Why that's doing that? I'm actually very confused. So perhaps it might be to do with single versus double quotes, but it really shouldn't be. I don't understand why. Oh. Okay. SSH, wait, what? Could not resolve host name C. What? For what the hell? Print, hold on. Print current path. Yeah. And then also let's just do that as well. Or L strip, sorry. 
Listrip. Let's just do a Listrip. Oh, they wouldn't. Sorry. That wouldn't work. But hold on. And then also got. Okay, why is it not stripping this first one? So it's making. So it's taking the path, it's replacing it. It should also be stripping it. In there. Maybe. Oh, uh, it's yeah, it's gonna be uh, current path. Oops, oh, not strip. Uh, dot. Okay, wait, hold on. Paths dot split on the comma and then dot strip right there. Oh no, because this is gonna be the list. Wait, I'm so oh my god, what the hell? Why is it not removing it? I'm so confused. None of this makes any sense right now. They're supposed to be stripped. I'm, so, I'm actually just so confused right now. Like, I don't understand. Oh, you know why? Because I haven't re-registered it. Because I'm an idiot. Oh my god. Okay, that's why. Okay, 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 okay. Um... Uh, OS dots, uh, uh, bum, bum. Didn't I actually replace each of these? Hold on. So in this case, then we have that. Okay, I'm just gonna have to do this per OS, I guess. If OS the name is equal to MC, uh, then do um, Oh, you know why? You know why that doesn't work? Because this needs to CD into each of the directories and run it. <laughs> uh, yes. That would be why. Okay. So this needs to cd into there and then run that command. So CD into the current path and, and run the command. Okay. CD into the path and run the command. I'm actually very confused. 
because nothing This already have these on it, maybe? Do I not need these? Okay, I am not sure what's going on here now. genuinely quite confused so I am gonna take a break for today uh, and I guess I'll come back into this tomorrow um, so it's actually saying that the CD isn't working hold on so if I remove this just do that so it's actually just not even it's, it's, it's entirely due with the paths. It's just not actually finding paths, which I find weird. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll have to debug that tomorrow. So, uh, thanks for taking it around. I know this was probably kind of infuriating to watch because this was bug-ridden, but um, uh, thank you for sticking around anyways, and uh, hopefully I'll see you next time when there's actually some usable functionality. Hello. So, it is now much later in the day. Uh, I've gone through and I've made quite a few changes. Um... I ended up not having time to record them because I was in and out of doing some coding, just fixing up the stuff that was going on. Uh, basically, long and short of it is that for some reason, um, it looks like when Python is injecting the path, uh, it was appending a single quote to each of them, which doesn't work in Windows, I assume. Probably works in post six systems, I'm pretty sure I've done it before. Um, but I guess it just doesn't work in Windows systems, so I just went ahead and uh, stripped those. Um, so they're gone. And that's uh, that resolved the main issue that I was running into. Uh, the other thing that I cannot remember if I'd already added at that point uh, was going in and <clears throat> making sure to keep track of what the original path was after doing all the CDing because uh, otherwise the problem that was happening was uh, the path, once it got changed with running the commands, uh, you'd end up in a different path, which was kind of weird user experience wise. So I just went back and modified that and fixed that. Um, and then just a couple of quality of life changes and a couple of things that I moved around and reconfigured uh, to make a little bit more sense. <clears throat> so one of those was uh, I vastly simplified how the dispatcher is actually registering everything. Uh, so now it's just simply register and then the name, command, and paths. And then you just run the name of the, uh, the command that you want to execute. Uh, if you want to overwrite the command, you can do it here, or if you want to just overwrite the path, you can do that here. Uh, on top of that, I went through and just used mkdocs to build a quick uh, read the docs .io, um, to just go through and create just a quick, quick start section. Uh, if you have mkdocs installed, then all you do is create an account on readthedocs.io point it at your GitHub folder and that's it. So if I go in here and go to uh, read the docs.io, uh, then I can just show you what this looks like. Uh, actually, I bet you I probably signed in with GitHub. Yep, which I did. Uh, and in here, basically in the, uh, in the latest version, all that you do is you just hit build, uh, you just point it at your GitHub repository and it works, although right now it says that it's failing. 
which I actually don't know why it's failing, but there you go. Uh, I will have to check out why that's failing. Um, but anyways, um, it built a documentation site for me anyways, and so now I'm just using that as the main information. That also has information about usage, how to register, how to do some fancy things like overriding, which is something that I realized is actually quite useful. Um, like, for example, being able to register your environment paths and then being able to <coughs> run ad hoc commands to those environments as much as you want to, uh, and the opposite way around, being able to do the same commands uh, with on different environments for um, different stuff. So there we go. So yeah, so that was the v0.1 release, which is now officially on PyPI. And so we go on here. Go and check it out. It is now available on PyPI, so you can pip install AHD and use it. Uh, I've been using it a little bit today. Uh, so if I go back and I do, uh, I can't remember what I set up the command with, but if I do AHD red, uh, I think it's ED. Yes, it did. And so that just basically goes into all of my um, code directories and just get pulls on all of them which is super useful for me because as you can see, they're kind of annoying to get to because they're all in different places uh, for organization purposes, but kind of annoying to CD into each of them. So now I just do HDED and it goes in and CDs and pulls all of those for you. <coughs> super useful. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I apologize towards the end of the stream there. I'm getting a little bit annoyed with some of the bugs that were popping up. Most of them were kind of ridiculous little things. Um, it just kind of goes to show that doing constant mutations on paths and that sort of stuff uh, is very complicated and really uh, should have done a different approach, but unfortunately I kind of committed to using config parser at this point, uh, but I probably should have used a different system because I forgot that config parser doesn't allow you to convert types. It does no implicit type conversions. It assumes everything's a string, which makes things a little bit more complicated. Um, but unfortunately, that was a decision that I made, and uh, I think I'm going to stick with it just because I think that the worst of it is hopefully behind us so um yeah anyways thank you for uh, watching and sticking around and i will see you in the next live stream for more information and uh, to see the next set of uh, stuff that we'll be working on thanks